Nine Jewish priests plot a land on the Mount of Olives and five red heifers. All these elements are in place for what some Jews and Gentiles believe is the key to building the third Jewish temple. Some also believe it indicates the coming of the Messiah. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. Netanyahu just confirmed third temple rebuilding will start in November. Are you ready for the news of the century? Prime Minister Netanyahu just announced that the rebuilding of the third temple will begin in November. This is a significant event that will have major implications for the world. What will this mean for the region? Is this a move that will bring peace or start a new conflict? What will the new temple look like and how will it impact the current holy sites? Let's explore the implications of this momentous announcement. Join us as we dive into this history-shaping video and learn more about the Third Temple and its potential impact. Deep within the heart of Jerusalem lies a tale of ancient glory and divine prophecy. It is a story of destruction, hope, and a longing to rebuild. This enigmatic narrative revolves around the concept of the Third Temple, a sacred place that holds immense significance in Judaism. But this is no ordinary structure. It is believed to be the holiest site for Jews, a place where worship will transcend earthly boundaries. The echoes of the past resound through time, reminding us of the two temples that once stood tall before their untimely demise. The first fell victim to the Babylonians' fury in 587 BCE, while the second succumbed to the ravages of the Romans in 70 CE. Yet, despite their destruction, the belief in the Third Temple endures. For those who adhere to Orthodox Judaism, the Third Temple represents not just a physical structure, but a spiritual beacon, a symbol of the messianic age that awaits. Prophets of old have foretold its construction, intertwining the destiny of the Temple with the fate of humanity. It is a belief shared by some Christians, who see the Third Temple as a harbinger of the end times. However, this vision of a resplendent temple is not without its challenges. The old city of Jerusalem, where the Temple Mount stands, is already home to the Dome of the Rock, a majestic edifice revered by Muslims worldwide. The clash between the desires of the Jewish and Muslim communities has ignited a fiery debate casting a shadow of uncertainty over the possibility of realizing this sacred dream. The struggle for control over this hallowed ground has transcended religious boundaries, seeping into the very fabric of politics. It has become an inextricable part of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, fueling tensions and hindering the pursuit of peace. The mere mention of the Third Temple can ignite passions, sparking fierce debates and raising questions about the delicate balance between faith, history, and diplomacy. Yet amidst the chaos and fervor, the yearning for the Third Temple persists. It is not merely a religious aspiration, but a goal deeply rooted in the hearts of many in Israel. The dream of rebuilding the temple stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit of a people who have withstood trials and tribulations throughout history. In the heart of the ancient city of Jerusalem, a long-standing dispute has captured the world's attention. Who should control this sacred land? Israel and the Palestinian National Authority both claim it as their capital, igniting a fiery conflict that leaves the international community hesitant to intervene. Yet amidst this chaos, a fascinating dream has taken hold within the Jewish community. The construction of a magnificent third temple on the revered Temple Mount. This extraordinary hope is deeply ingrained in Jewish tradition and prayer, forming an integral part of their worship. Though it remains unbuilt, the Third Temple holds extraordinary significance for Orthodox Jews, who see it as the future holiest place of worship for their faith. The desire to rebuild this majestic structure can be traced back to the devastating destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE. Throughout history, valiant attempts have been made to fulfill this vision. Emperor Hadrian, with a surprising change of heart, initially permitted the reconstruction. However, fate had other plans. As the Bar Kokhba revolt erupted in 132 CE, led by the fierce Simon Bar Kokhba. 
Determined to resurrect the temple, construction began, only to be thwarted by the might of the Roman forces. The embattled Jewish community faced severe consequences. Their city was renamed, and access to Jerusalem was strictly limited, except on Tisha B'Av, a day of mourning. Undeterred by these setbacks, even more audacious plans emerged. Julian the Apostate, a Roman emperor, sought to rebuild the temple in 361-363 CE. Surprisingly, he allowed the Jews to take part in this grand endeavor, offering financial support. However, Rabbi Hillel, infused with an unwavering belief that this sacred task should solely be the responsibility of the Jewish community, rejected the emperor's money. Obstacles plagued this ambitious project, with mysterious flames and earthquakes seen as divine intervention, signaling that the time was not yet ripe. Over the centuries, opportunities ebbed and flowed. In 610 CE, the Sassanid Empire briefly granted control of Jerusalem to the Jewish people. Excited whispers of animal sacrifices resuming floated through the air, a glimmer of hope in their cherished dream. Alas, the Byzantines swiftly reclaimed the area, transforming the unfinished structure into a desolate garbage dump. The ancient stones cried out. Their echoes are still reverberating today. Amidst the tumultuous history of the Muslim conquest, Jews and Arabs found themselves in conflict. However, an incredible proposal for unity emerged under the banner of Abraham by none other than the revered figure, Muhammad. Jewish people began the arduous task of rebuilding the temple, only to be displaced by Arabs who repurposed the site for prayers. This clash of cultures continued over the centuries, with sparks of hope for the temple's restoration in the midst of Jerusalem's desolation. Fast forward to Israel's capture of the Temple Mount in 1967, and a fervent movement for Jewish sovereignty took hold. Rabbi Shomo Gorin, the chief rabbi of the IDF, defied norms and led Jews in a daring prayer service on the Temple Mount, despite resistance from Muslim guards and police. His bold stance drew criticism from the defense ministry, but he remained resolute in his pursuit of Jewish sovereignty. Other key figures, such as Chief Rabbis Unman and Nim, reinforced laws against Jewish access to the Mount in an attempt to prevent conflicts. While mainstream orthodoxy awaited divine intervention, the Temple Institute took an active approach to bring about the construction of the long-awaited Third Temple. In 1983, Rabbi Gorin claimed to have seen the mystical Ark of the Covenant, further fueling the desire for rebuilding. The rabbi's prohibition on Temple Mount entry remained intact for years, but in 2014, 400 Jews defied the ban and prayed there, showcasing the ongoing tension surrounding this holy site. The road to rebuilding the Third Temple is riddled with obstacles, primarily due to the presence of two ancient Islamic structures, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, on the Temple Mount. Any attempt to alter or construct Jewish structures near these sacred sites could ignite severe international conflicts given their deep Muslim associations. Complicating matters further, debates persist regarding the precise location of the Second Temple, adding layers of complexity and uncertainty. Orthodox Jewish scholars mostly reject immediate attempts at rebuilding, instead choosing to await the arrival of the Messiah. The lack of consensus on the exact cubit measurements used in the temple's construction only further complicates efforts. The Talmud recounts that the second temple was only made possible through direct prophetic revelations from figures such as Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. In a shocking revelation, an investigation by Haritz has exposed the financial support from Israel's deputy defense minister and a key U.S. donor, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, towards initiatives aiming to reinstate Jewish control over the Temple Mount. This raises questions about the Israeli government's stance on Temple Mount developments and its ties to the long-awaited establishment of a third temple. Despite Israel officially opposing changes to the status quo, 
it is revealed that the country funds the Temple Institute, which is directly linked to efforts for a third temple. Even more intriguingly, the investigation has uncovered that the U.S., while outwardly against altering the Temple Mount's status quo, indirectly supports the Temple Institute through tax-exempt donations. These financial ties involving key players like Rabbi Yehuda Glick cast a suspicious light on the Israeli government's true intentions. But let us delve deeper into the intricate web of historical and archaeological significance surrounding the proposed location for the reconstruction of the temple. The anticipation of rebuilding the third temple is undeniably intertwined with the city of David, a name that echoes through the biblical passages and holds immense historical significance. In 2 Samuel 5.9, the mention of the city of David serves as a guiding beacon for explorations into its mysterious past. Recent archaeological excavations within the city of David have unearthed the remnants of five interconnected urban sites dating back to approximately 1000 BC, aligning with the reign of King David. The remarkable resemblance in design and intricate details of these cities fuels speculation about the existence of a sophisticated monarchy, possibly anchored by a central stronghold associated with King David himself. The volatile nature of the issue surrounding the Temple Mount cannot be underestimated. Historical incidents like the 1990 riot, sparked by rumors of temple rebuilding, the 1996 riots resulting from an archaeological tunnel's opening, and the clashes initiated by Ariel Sharon's visit in 2000 serve as reminders of the tension and sensitivity surrounding this sacred site. These incidents highlight the ongoing struggle to maintain a delicate balance and the potential for further unrest. The restoration of a temple holds much more than just architectural significance. It delves into the deep-rooted beliefs of the Jewish people, raising a question of immense importance. Where should this temple stand? The Jewish community finds itself at the crossroads of numerous opinions, presenting a challenging decision to rebuild its sacred space. However, a prevailing belief persists, claiming that the Dome of the Rock, a revered Muslim shrine, now stands on the hallowed grounds where the original temple once resided. The Temple Institute of Jerusalem, dedicated to rebuilding the Third Temple, designates this contested site as the Rock, calling for the removal of the significant Islamic structure. But here's the twist. The Dome of the Rock isn't a mosque. It carries immense religious and historical value, leaving many to ponder the possibility of a Jewish temple coexisting alongside it. The debate is fierce, encompassing historical, religious, and even political dimensions. This thought-provoking conversation extends far beyond religious beliefs. It dives into archaeology as well as geopolitical considerations. As the world watches with bated breath, this ongoing dialogue could potentially reshape religious history. The resolution of this critical matter could, quite literally, shape the future of this sacred location. What are your thoughts on whether the Dome of the Rock should make way for this new construction? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.